And I especially want to say hello to the people who are joining us for the first time. We're, the, we're an organization that has met in person for the past 45 years, once a month, generally speaking. So this is a new venue for us, and we are very excited about the possibilities. Uh, my name is Susan Hunter, and I'm the chairperson and program coordinator for SFF. And our tagline or our motto is, shining a light into the metaphysical community since 1973. I want to ask you a question. Who is Spiritual Frontiers Fellowship? Hmm, well, it's you. You are our fellowship. You are our community. And we are glad you're here. However, we are also a nonprofit volunteer run organization who invites experts in their fields or master teachers to share their information on a variety of topics that are within the realm of spirituality, healing arts, communications with other dimensional beings, and just transformation in general. Um, and our goal is to help our community raise its awareness and consciousness to uplift you on your spiritual path. With all of our lectures, as with any information that you may receive, we ask that you use your own discernment to find what's truth for you in your heart. Uh, we're very excited to have uh, Reverend Dr. Marsha Walters with us this evening to speak to us tonight about intuition upgrade. Please note that she will have a Zoom workshop this Saturday, September 5th, on awakening to planetary ascension. So if you want to join that, please go to Spiritual Frontiers Fellowship's website um, to sign up for that. I would like to announce and invite you to join us for our upcoming speakers. One of these, and if one of these topics resonates with you, please mark your calendars. Okay. That's good. Okay, good. So again, Thank you for your patience. <laughs> this is the first time we've done this. So um, here again is the Zoom workshop for Marsha's Planetary Ascension. But um, next month, there we go. Next month on Thursday, October 1st, nationally known Chris Bledsoe from Hope Mills, North Carolina will discuss his experiences over the past eight years. Um, now, Chris took a lot of time off um, from public speaking and is now starting to share his experiences again. And the title of his talk is My Journey with the Angels. Much of his information that he's going to talk about next month has not been given to the public yet. And then the following month, uh, Thursday, November 5th, we will feature Garth Robertson from Pittsburgh, North Carolina. And I always want to say Garth Brooks. And hold on just a minute, Marcia, this is going too fast. <laughs> Let's just stop this right here. Okay. So, so just listen. <laughs> we'll get this figured out next time. So um, Thursday, November 5th, we'll have Garth Robertson from uh, Pittsburgh, North Carolina. And he is a master musician. He will be bringing his didgeridoos, crystal bowls, and other healing frequency tools that of his talk is sacred sound healing how frequency affects matter thursday december 5th marsha moon hebrank of durham north carolina will speak on opening to grace discovering and embracing your divine gifts with the angels um, and on thursday january 7th 2021 <laughs> we're already almost there we will have an astrological preview of 2021 and the speaker has yet to be announced so we're still working on that um, there will be more information on the website if you have interest in joining any of these meetings i want to ask you a question did you notice that there is no fee for tonight's event so we are asking that if you find this meeting has value to you to please make a donation on our website, and that website is spiritual-frontiers.com. We would like to be able to continue our work for our metaphysical community. There will, now here's some housekeeping. There will be a 10 minute break from 8.20 to 
And we may have a short pause before we have the questions and answers at the end from 9.15 to 9.30. We will use the chat box um, only at the end of this meeting. So you, you will then be able to allow, you'll be able to submit your questions. Um, so while you're going through this, if you feel, if you have some questions, just jot them down. And if they're not answered, you're welcome to inquire at the end. So everyone is also going to be muted uh, tonight just to give the speaker um, her space to talk. So uh, please note that during the chat room, Catherine and Smith will be our SFF monitors. So now I have the privilege to introduce Dr. Marsha Walters, and it's my pleasure to introduce her for tonight. Not only, uh, um, Marsha is not only an engineering physicist, She's also an ordained minister and a very effective spiritual healer. Dr. Walters works on the intersection of science and spirituality to empower people with an in-depth knowledge of how to blend physics and spirit to create life transforming miracles. Marcia has studied extensively, gaining a broad understanding of both traditional sciences and metaphysical and esoteric teachings. Marsha's expertise combines her master's degree in physics and a PhD in electrical engineering. With less, traditional with less traditional explorations of how the invisible manifests as the visible. Marsha has studied many religious, spiritual, and healing traditions with noted teachers and healers, including Drum Below Melchizedek, Matrix Energetics with Richard Barlett, and the Ascended Masters Mystery School. As a healer, Marsha assists those who choose to transform their lives physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Dr. Wad Walters is a medical intuitive and transpersonal spiritual counselor who is highly trained to work with clients to enhance their healing. Using the healing modality she, ha she has developed, Marsha communicates directly with the quantum field on behalf of the client. She is able to establish energetic rapport with work patterns of light and information to help the client shift into healthier patterns. This Saturday, again, September 5th, Marsha will be teaching the workshop Awakening to Planetary Ascension. Uh, it will be another Zoom workshop as well. Um, so this workshop will help you become fully present, awake, and aware, and will be able to to consciously engage with intense cosmic energies of the planetary ascension process. So Marcia is a very skilled and intuitive person. I have a really exciting program for you. I'm sure you're, you're going to be just uplifted. And, uh, and to say that, well, let me just go ahead and start with my screen share. This is me, and this is our, our talk tonight is Intuition Upgrade. So if you want to get a hold of me, here's the information right here uh, for my website and for my Gmail. And I want to uh, I want to start by giving my gratitude to for Spiritual Frontiers Fellowship and for Susan Hunter and the whole team that keeps this going together. We are, as you might have already guessed, in a, in a bit of transition with uh, Spiritual Frontiers Fellowship. So thank you for your patience. And without further ado, let's go ahead and do what we always do. What, what I always do is to call in the, the divine and to, of course, uh, just a couple minutes ago, I called Archangel Michael and he's the reason we're back up. So <laughs> they're, they're already here and already helping. But just take a breath together and realize our oneness. And think about God, the creator, your higher power, 
the universe. Beloved creator of all that is, in the name I am that I am, we love you. We are for this opportunity to be together. And we call upon all those beings of 100% white light. Those beings that we love that have always been there for us and we call upon their presence here tonight, including our beloved Saint Germain, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Jesus the Christ, beloved Archangel Michael and Faye, Samuel and Charity, Jophiel and Christine. All the seven mighty archangels, the beloved seven mighty Elohim, beloved Hercules in Amazonia, beloved Cyclopea in Virginia, peace and aloha. We call to the heart of beloved Alpha and Omega and the great central sun to bless all those gathered here, to download and present them with all information, with clarity, with wisdom, with vision, and to know that they are loved and adored, to know your support, and to bring us tonight especially clarity of vision, to help us to know that we, as sons and daughters of God, are amazing light beings and help us to bring that light energy to this planet during these challenging times and to remove from us all fear, all sense of division and to bring our hearts to the place of peace that passes all understanding regardless of any circumstances. And we are grateful this is done and we accept this is done in the full power of the Mother, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so it is. Amen. Again, I give my gratitude to those beings of light who have always been with me. These are just a few of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for mastering this earthly plane so that you can guide us when we follow your footsteps. Again, I have to reiterate Susan's disclaimer. Believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who said it, no matter if I've said it unless it agrees with your own reason and your own common sense. You'll find that I will try my best to give you things that will take you out of your box. So use your discernment. Use that connection that you all have to the light within. The motivation for this talk is really the times we are living in. How do we accelerate our arrival into 5D consciousness? Well, as a collective, really, it's about what we can do on the personal level. We do this by always looking to God for the answers. And I think that we need to have this constant reminder of how we communicate with spirit. We are in the transitory phase of the final months, I believe, of making our ascension on the earthly plane. And this is a little bit how it looks. We're jumping from 3D. We're, we're really in 4D right now, going all the way to 5D. And how is the world gonna be different? 3D, we're filled with this illusion. And as we're awakening and masses of people awakening, one thing that I help 
for, to help us to do tonight is to see through that illusion and to let go of our ignorance and get knowledge and understanding, abundance, peace, and love. These are wonderful words, but how does it really come about? Part of what we're going through as a planet is this process of separation between 3D and 4D and 5D. And it's so biblical, the times that we're living in. And from Matthew 3.12, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the shaft with an unquenchable fire. So many people of you feel like you're in the firing pan, <laughs> feeling the fire of all that's happening in this world and understanding and seeing that it is throwing that wheat and shelf up in the air so that we can see it, so that it can be separated. With an intuition upgrade, What we'd like to do is tap into that universal intelligence. We know we have that ability and we want to increase our abilities of perception and to know that we're in touch with this. So we're going to start by exploring the seven types of intuition and to become aware of how personally we can receive this information, how to expand these abilities and how to be crystal clear about when we're communicating with the universe, or when we might be communicating with our egos. And I have some exercises later for you to help this process. We will explore the defining the intuition or the sixth sense, keys to intuition, what to do to enhance the intuition and to what then we can do to upgrade our intuition. Where does intuition come from? Well, really, it is a subconscious process that produces internal information you have experienced, gathered at some point, and perhaps forgotten that is not conscious. So that is one way we get intuition. Or we get information that comes from divine consciousness, such as mystical sources, your higher self, angels, or spirit guides. So it's important to understand that we really have different sources for this in intuition. There's seven basic types, clairvoyance, which is visual, clairaudience, which is hearing, clairsentience, feeling, claircognizance, which is our thoughts, knowings, clairgustance, which is taste, clairalience, smell, clairempathy, when we're connected to others. Clairvoyance used to be all I would think about. And according to this, I didn't think I was intuitive at all. Clairvoyance are visual messages. The light in the room may get brighter or darker. You may have vivid or lucid dreams that you really can't forget and seem very, very real. You may see images in your third eye. This to me used to be the ultimate. And I thought it wasn't clairvoyant because this wasn't my type. Also though, we have clairaudience, your inner voice. How do you know if your inner voice is speaking to you? For one thing, it will be very non-judgmental. It won't criticize you. And it also won't puff you up or build your ego. It's not emotional. It's very neutral. Get behind the car. Shorten to the point, go left, go right, exit now. And it can be very symbolic and have a unique meaning just for you. And it's usually not literal, but can be. Clear sentient are those gut feelings that we get. And two, I'm sure many of us have gotten these gut feelings and don't even uh, equate it with being intuitive. But when we get emotional or physical sensations like butterflies in the stomach or a little nervousness or sudden urges to do something different, or we might just all of a sudden feel lighter, freer, happier, or excited, and just have this urge to go places. 
or we just might be peaceful and have that peace that we know goes way beyond what we understand. Might feel a change in the air pressure or a lot of people I know get buzzes or waves of energy that just runs through your body. These are called Kriyas. Subtle physical or emotional feelings as you move from one spot to the other or goosebumps. That's a real good indicator when your whole hair stands up on your body. Claire cognizance is just knowing. So this is, this is basically my number one. And so it's important for you to understand where you are with these abilities. Which one is your number one? Claire cognizance is, is what I've always had and I never even recognized it as being intuitive. It's a clear knowing without knowing how you know. The intuitive thought can be short, specific, and distinct. Information comes to your mind suddenly and there's no logic to it. Very often, it, it will make you question because, because of that fact that there is no logic to it and it actually may seem illogical. It's an invitation definitely to get out of that left side of your brain. But when you get these knowings, there, there's no room for doubt. Though we can always become the doubting Thomas and not take the most advantage of these knowings. These are Claire Gustins and Claire Aliens, which are, um, they're not as common, but they're really cool when they happen. Claire Gustins is clear tasting, Claire Aliens, clear smelling. We can pick up intuitive messages through taste or smell. It's, it's not common, but some ascended masters have a beautiful aroma when they enter the room. If you've ever had the privilege of experiencing that, it is amazing. And sometimes we can also pick up smells that are significant if we're working with the client or the client may pick up aromas. Claire empathy. We don't always think of this as being an intuitive ability. Some of us think of this as being uh, more of a curse than a gift. But uh, physical empathy, we physically feel what another life feels or the environment. And then there's emotional empathy where we sense what others are feeling below the surface. Mental empathy, we know what another is really thinking about and it's a telepathic connection. Spiritual empathy, we pick up the unseen world of angels, elements, even demons and discarnates. Being an empath can be overwhelming sometimes, especially now. If we're feeling what the world is feeling, if we feel that mass consciousness of fear and frustration, but we can also tap in to the mass consciousness that it is at peace. It's important to ask ourselves when we feel these feelings that we can't at first identify. So there's three important questions. Is this feeling of my body? In other words, is it, is it mine? Is it from my body? So is it something that I'm also sending out to someone else? And should I be doing that? Is it something that's coming to my body? As we become more and more intuitive and empathic, it is important for us to learn how to master these energies and to master them as they get subtler and subtler and to be responsible for these energies. If we're receiving energy that is overwhelming from outside of us, and this happens sometimes quite often, how I deal with this is I just get centered and direct these energies through the fires of my heart. And so if you visualize and go inside your heart and see that divine spark there and watch it grow and grow and grow. And you can take these energies, whatever these feelings are, and just give them to the divine for transmutation.
these are the sources of clairvoyance according to Grabovoy, Gregory Grabovoy. Logical clairvoyance is one that comes through mental processes. So visual images will pop up from your memory. If you say, imagine an apple. I'm sure probably everyone here can see an apple in their mind's eye. So pay attention to where you see that apple, how you see that apple. I know the, the first time someone asked me to visualize, I, I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that? It's, it's something that uh, it's difficult to teach or difficult to learn. It's just something that you have to go within and practice for yourself. Spiritual clairvoyance usually comes from contemplation. A visual image will just pop up from your connection to source. For example, contemplate how to transform a situation and see what image comes into your third eye. Now, the reason I really want to mention this is because it becomes very, very important from a healing standpoint. When we drop into our heart and work with the field for someone that may have a particular issue, our tendency sometimes can be to say, oh, from the left brain, I know that the color purple might help them. And so it's, it's very important to let the image just show up. You know from your heart connection and your connection to source. When we work with the field and we work with people, it's very important to make sure that we stay in our hearts connected to our guidance. Now, what are some of the keys? Developing intuition is a process. It doesn't usually happen overnight. In the beginning, intuition has kind of caught your attention, but it will seem random and uncontrollable, and you, you, you don't know when it's coming, and you don't know what it means. A beginners in intuition, you try to pay attention to your intuition and figure out its messages, but we really don't understand them. When we use intermediate in intuition, we're getting more where we find ways to actually foster that ability. And you learn techniques and methods to help you practice your abilities. So as we advance in our intuitive processes, and we practice our techniques and our methods, which are, are basically the most important is to be still and listen. But you hone your intuitive skills as your abilities increase, and then you know more about those subtle energies around people. But really when the, the ultimate in intuition and the ultimate state very often of our path is having that ability to be in the now. When you're focused right on the now moment, your left brain is quiet. So it's not worrying about what if the next slide is there? What if, what if this happens? What if that happens? So what did I forget? No, you're just in the flow, in the now, completely focused. Then you can have an intuitive mind and you can live your life that way. It's about learning to meditate and taking that meditative skill and living your life in a state of meditation. No small order. Right? So with your keys of working with intuition, first we want to always make sure that we connect to the higher self and we want to do this through the heart. And while we're connected in the higher self through the heart, <clears throat> we consciously want to also focus on the third eye. And it can help to stimulate the third eye by using the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. There's other ways to stimulate the third eye. We can do meditation exercises to focus on different things. We can sing, we can chant. We always want to be centered and balanced. 
and we can remember that we can ask questions. We want to ask questions. Be relaxed and open to receive. The other thing is when we get these intuitive hits, we have to decide what to do with the answers. Very often we may get a hit and we think we know in our left brain what it means. So really what we want to do is always ask for help or clarification from your guides or guardian angels, whatever it is that you work with and ask for confirmation. We don't want to jump to conclusions, have faith, Trust in the process, yet discern. Now we can also use some helpful tools like our, our pendulums and our tarot cards and different kinds of things. But we really want to make sure that we focus on the connection to the divine. And we can use these tools to help bring us confirmation. But the key thing, like it is to play the piano or anything else, is just to practice, practice, practice. So this is where we want to look. We want to be focused and connected. Like this, heart to mind. How do we do that? It's a practice. I have a uh, two day workshops where we learn that practice because when we connect the heart to the mind, well, it's really a new way of being. It is a new way of having the heart and the mind connection working together instead of what they tend to do is fight each other. Also, when you're, when you're discerning any kind of information, and it's important, especially these days when we're being bombarded with so many different sources of information, how do we know what's fake news, what's real news, what's the truth, what's not the truth? One of the most important things that we can do is consider the source. And that has a, a real double meaning there. Consider the source get as close to the source for the information as you possibly can. And always, always, always ask your source, your higher self for confirmation. This way you can know, but you can only do this when you are coming from a neutral place. If you are emotionally attached, to some outcome or some presidential candidate that you like or don't like, it's hard to get real clear information, to just go in the heart and be neutral. And when you work with other beings, always make sure to set your intention to work only with beings of 100% white light. This is ultimately crucially important. <clears throat> because there are other beings out there. There are beings, uh, demons, discarnates, other entities that are across the veil, at the very least want to call mischief, cause mischief, and at the worst, they have ill intent. So if you're not sure some entity that is trying to connect you, or if you're asking and some entity is showing up, we have to learn what is called the techniques to try the spirits. It is cosmic law that as a child of God, you can ask to know the light level of any being. And also you'll be told the answer. We have to ask. You can use this technique for any being, that's an embodiment or out of embodiment. You can use this technique for, to find out if politicians have light. This is something that until recently, I always used it specifically just with 
other beings through the veil because it's, it's sometimes very hard to distinguish energies, especially when you can't see them. But I had, I think part of, part of my wake up call within the past couple years uh, was this, and probably should talk to you about it. Um, I went with a, a lot of my friends to see this man called John Agar up in uh, Omega Institute in New York. And, you know, I didn't really ask source because all my friends were going. Oprah Winfrey said he was a great guy and recommended him. And, and we see that uh, he didn't turn out to be such a good guy, did he? He turned out to be using the name of God and pretending to be a healer to do um, horrible things to people, to take their energy. And so I re really reflected a lot on this and, and asked Source, I'm like, what, why didn't I see through this? Why didn't I know this? Why did I fall for this? Because I stood in line waiting for him to touch me like so many other people. And when I got near him, I just, I couldn't feel anything really. I was expecting this white light, amazing thing and I got nothing. And it wasn't until I found out that he had been imprisoned that I really asked about this. I'm like, why didn't I feel anything at all? I'm so intuitive, right? I'm such a, a whiz with energies. Well, it turns out that the answer that I was given was he was a black magician and he was uh, above my pay grade, so to speak. Um, but I have since um, asked to raise my pay grade <laughs> so, that, so that I will be more aware and alert when these kinds of things happen. But all you have to do to try the spirits is just in the name of God, command that they show forth your light. So do it, do it with me if you want to. Ask me. In the name I am that I am, I command that you show forth your light. It's that easy if we think to do it. And light beings will be happy to do this. They'll be happy to show you their light. Other beings will just, they'll usually just leave you. Or you may actually be able to see some darkness. Ask, 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 ask. I don't know if you had parents like I did when I was a little two year old asking, what's, what about this? What about that? How, what, why do trees come from? Why do babies come from? And, and you know what I heard? Probably what you did is like, you asked too many questions. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so I learned to stop asking questions and I had to reteach myself to ask questions. The universe loves it when we ask questions. It, it, it lets the universe know that we're engaged, that we care, that we're in awe, that we really want to work with the energies. And when you ask questions, you, you can ask any questions you want. But if you ask open-ended questions, you'll get really big answers. The more open the question, the more comprehensive the answer. So a lot of times I'll ask when I'm working with someone or I have someone who has a problem, I'm like, if I knew how to help this person, what could I do for them? What could I possibly do? So that's an invitation for the, design, for the divine to come in and show you. So we're used to thinking, we, we're used to going to our brains and say, well, I know this person and I know that person can help and I know this person. But we're opening up to the universe, to that universal intelligence and saying, if I knew, how could I help? And another question that's great to ask every day, to help continually always increase your awareness, it's if I were aware of that, which I would not normally be aware, what would that be? 
that's a way to get you out of your box, to get you out of where you are, to help you to see and expand your consciousness. And we can ask just very general questions. If I were to receive a message for my highest good right here, right now, what would it be? But you have to be emotionally neutral and calm to receive this information. Receptive, yes, passive, open to guidance. Have a childlike mind. It's also helpful to be lighthearted and playful. The universe loves to play. The universe absolutely is like a little kid in a sandbox. Creative and playful and and so if we can remember that part of us or bring it forward, we can really play with the universe and really get a lot of information about not only what's going on, but things we'd like to learn about. But it's really most important thing is not to be in your left brain, assuming that you already know the answer. Uh, probably most of you know what the word assume means, right? <laughs> Don't assume anything. Then what do we do when we get these answers? Don't judge them. Our tendency, even when we're in our right brain, accepting our intuition, is to jump into the left brain and say, well, that can't be. Or, I have a better idea. And then we can also ask for further clarification. Ask for clarification. Ask questions again and again and again if you do not fully understand these promptings that you get. Why am I seeing the color blue? Why am I seeing the sky? Why am I seeing the shape of those clouds? Is there a message in there? I don't know. I, I, how often do you go out and just look at the sky and look for the messages in the clouds? But above all, do not assume that you know what these answers mean. It's not yours to figure out. When you're working with the divine, you're in that right brain. You're connected in the heart. When you're connected in the heart with the brain that way, the brain becomes the feminine principle. So you're then relying on your right brain. But I always expect the unexpected. Spirit loves to surprise you. And the answers will come out sometimes so far out in left field. Some, the answers will, will be things that we would never, ever think of if we were just relying on our left brains. So dialogue with source energy. Talk to source. And it doesn't matter whether you just see source as God or the father or the mother or particular guides. Guides are just beings that have, um, they're hundred percent white light, but they, they kind of have specialties like Archangel Michael, we call upon him for protection. And then also know that spirit is not usually going to give you really detailed answers that's because spirit is there to help us to assist us but certainly not to take the pleasure of life from us by telling us completely what to do and how to do it we are here to develop our own mastery in this schoolroom so always 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 ask for help when you need it, ask for help. Sometimes we get so stuck in thinking, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to, if it's, if it's till the day I die, I'm going to figure out how to, no, go ahead, ask for help, ask for assistance, ask for a sign. If you're, if you've got something you're not sure about, ask for a confirmation, ask for understanding, ask for clarification for guidance, for validation. It's okay. Spirit is very willing to help us. And observation and validation is really important, especially when we're working through situations that we want to transform. 
there may be a situation that we want to heal. But our minds and bodies together do not accept something as real in this energy plane until it's validated. So even though we want to primarily use the right brain when we're receiving information, we've got to give throw a bone to the left brain <laughs> so that we can bring this into this world. And validation is very important to completely bring any transformations into this reality. I especially find this very often with my works with matrix energetics. It's a new template can be downloaded so quickly and spirit will ask you and answer you so fast sometimes that we'll miss it if we're not paying attention. We'll miss it if we're not paying attention to our bodies looking for the sign. And so sometimes we just have to have validation to know something happens because it's so easy, but sometimes so subtle for spirit to come in and just like that, change something. And the validation can come in many ways. It could be a feeling in the body. It could be a vision. It could be a knowing. You may actually be able to see like so many people can through the veil and to see those beings that are there assisting you. The other thing to be aware of is sometimes when you are working with spirit and you want to transform a situation, something else might transform other than what is your stated intention. And that happens very often because sometimes we get so attached to our stated intention. We like feel that we put it in our, in our fist, like, and it's like, I need for this, I need that new car. Or I need to heal that part of my body right now. I got to get back to work. I, when we hold on to things and we think we know, then we're not letting God have it, right? We have to let God have it completely. Timing, how it happens, we have to let it all go. And so very often our stated intention is something that we cannot really let go of. And so God comes in and heals something, something different. <laughs> it's like, okay, I can, I can accept that. <laughs> The other thing to do is you really have to learn now to trust or not the difference between your inner voices. Learn their languages. Is it loving and supportive, but not flattering? It's not really telling you what to do, but it's like giving you a strong suggestion. <laughs> um, and the, if the ego is talking to you, you know, the ego is going to be critical. Is that inner critic telling you that you're not good enough or this isn't going to happen? Forget it. It does take an amount of faith and a large amount of trust. And sometimes we get those beings around us, even uh, guides that are not the best guides that we could have. We want to make sure that our guides have a hundred percent white light. So ask your higher self to show you, are my guides the best? Or do I need to fire them? Yes, you can fire your guide if you need to and replace it with a better one. Sometimes we, we don't think, we're not used to thinking that we have these choices. But if you can think it, you can do it. All right, so, so what are some of the ways that we're going to enhance our tuition? Always, always, always connect to your higher self. I connect to my higher self every minute of every day. At least that's my intention. <laughs> Sometimes we slip out when we get emotionally upset. But always before you consciously 
have a goal, have something you want to create, have something you want to heal, have something you want to manifest. Consciously connect to your higher self and be present in the moment and pay attention, listen. Because very often what happens is we think God doesn't answer us. But God answers us always. So the question is really, do we hear the answer? Or does the answer come in such an unexpected form we don't recognize? it? So we have to pay attention. And we constantly need to reevaluate re our beliefs and belief systems. We need to learn also to focus through the third eye. When we connect to the self, to the heart, and focus to the third eye at the same time, it takes practice. We're so addicted to these visual eyes that we forget about the one that's here. So develop a relationship with your third eye, bring your attention to it. And it is very much like an eye. It moves, has a lens like an eye. You can move it around. So play with moving it around and get different perspectives. We're still in these physical bodies. It's also helpful to do our best to rid our bodies of toxins, eat quality food, and then practice. Practice, practice, practice. And it's really about practicing in the moment, being aware, because things can happen and you can be told things and if you're so busy that you don't take the time to listen to them, you're missing out. All right. So get to know your guides. All right. We have we each one of us has a Holy Christ self, I like to call it, that is always our guide. We may may call that your guardian angel. And most people have one or two other guides. You can have a lot. I work so closely with the ascendant masters that my guides are changing because I know them and they have like specialties. And so for protection, there's Archangel Michael. For uh, healing, there's Archangel Raphael. So set your attention to meet them if you want to meet them. And just go into a meditation. Talk to them. Listen for their answers. And don't be discouraged if you don't hear them right away. They don't always speak back to you, but they may uh, develop a sign with you. Like they might leave you a feather when you need to pay attention, or they might leave you a penny on the ground. Get to know the archangels. These these can be like your best friends in the world. Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Chamuel, Uriel, Zachiel, Jophiel. And there are others. There are many angels, bands and legions of them. These are just some of the, the most familiar. Uh, just a quick aside here, if you want to go to summitlighthouse.org, there's these cool little lessons that you can discover which archangel you really have an affinity for. And they also have lessons for the chakras and karma and the study of Senna Kumara. Get to know the masters. To work with the ascendant masters is a blessing. And the, it's best to, like, like they're your friends, you establish a rapport with them. And you do this by, you can say your favorite prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sons and daughters of God, now and at the hour of our victory over sin, disease, and death. Just 
that honors her by giving her prayer. And that's not the Catholic version, by the way. Um, Jesus, the many prayers, Gautama Buddha, Saint Germain, Kuan Yin, they are such beautiful beings and they will appear in a moment's notice. So if we want to develop our intuition, it's important to know how we can bring it in, but it's important also to know the things that will stand in the way. And one of the things that can really stand in the way are buried under layers of subconsciousness or our belief systems or belie. It's important for all of us to recognize how programmed we, we are. We live in a society that programs us. And as children, we're in a theta state from the years from zero to seven. So we just, we just soak it up like a sponge. There's no discernment whatsoever. We soak it up from teachers, parents, churches. And then later, we're, we're still, we're still, being bombarded with beliefs that come in as memes, that come in through the TV, that come in through commercials. Oh, you really need this new car. You really need other things. But we've really, we've really been given a lot of false beliefs, primarily because people just don't know better. These beliefs limit us. The really worst of the worst are that we are born in sin and that Jesus is the only son of God. We're not taught that we are sons and daughters of God. How many of you were told when you were two years old that you were a powerful being that was a son of God? Probably nobody. It's important we have to consciously, and this is our job, this is really one of the most important things we can do right now is to recognize these limiting beliefs or lies that we have within us. And many of these will come from, especially when we do meditation, one of the great benefits of meditation, these beliefs will rise to the surface and we can recognize them. And very often it is just the light of our awareness that enables us to release the power that this belief was holding over us. It's just that, oh, it comes from the subconscious to the conscious and poof, goes to the light. Some of these beliefs we identify ourselves with so closely that we will not ever recognize them. The beliefs that we have when we're the youngest, establish for such a foundation for us that we may never see them. This is why it's, it's helpful to work with a men mentor or a healer sometimes to help you uncover these beliefs that are creating disharmony in your life. This is a little aside here, but, but I think it's really important as I go through here, I'm going to be referencing this more, but the English language comes from the Atlantean tongue and the Atlantean language included concepts of cosmic law that have been lost. Probably not a surprise there since the sinking of Atlantis, but our words have abbreviated these concepts and we've lost their inner meanings. And we're beginning to see through some of the language now and reclaim some of these inner meanings because along with looking at our belief systems it is very important to to examine our languaging so these are just some of the inner meanings that come when we say things what what do we really mean when we say something belief translates to be lie because most of our long held beliefs are lies. Ignorance, to ignore instance. So ignorance is something that we're responsible for. 
if we're ignorant, it's because we are ignoring cosmic law. Communication means come into union. Those of you who are fortunate enough to have a, a loving partner, you understand that communication is probably one of the most important things and something that some of us need to work on. <laughs> some of us more than others. <clears throat> come into union. Personality equates to personal reality. So your personality is something that we tend to be overly identified with. Because as we change our idea of ourselves, it is our personal realities that will change. Command. It's co-mandate. <clears throat> Uh, God says in the Bible, command ye me. And so what he's really saying is, let's work together. I've got the resources. You got a plan. Let's co-mandate. Let's co-create. Emotion. Energy in motion. It's been said, and I don't remember exactly where it is, but where I remember it from that 80% of the energy that we use every day, all the time is in our emotions. 80%. That's huge. Alone to all one. This is a very important key, especially right now because our sense of aloneness, if we really get into that sense, if we feel alone, it is the doorway to realizing our all oneness because we're never really truly alone are we to realize something is to have the real eyes to look at it evil energy veil evil is something uh, we don't talk about a lot we like to not think about it <laughs> and we certainly don't want to dwell on it but to deny its existence only gives it power evil creates over us an energy veil it is part of what creates this matrix in our lives it is part of the illusion Cognitive dissonance is something that we really need to, to think about now. Because when we challenge our beliefs, we can sometimes get upset, right? Or somebody else might challenge our beliefs and we tend to get angry. A mental conflict that occurs when our long held beliefs are challenged by new information. Have we, how, how often have we always heard, well, that's the way we do it because that's the way we've always done it. I remember getting that idea at work when people would come up with new ideas and creative ideas. It's like, well, we just don't do it that way. The brain's alarms will go off when a person feels threatened. On a deeply personal and emotional level, causing them to temporarily shut down and disregard any rational evidence that contradicts what they previously regarded as the truth. I want you to think about this because in the times that we're living in, we're getting so much information and a lot of this information will challenge our existing beliefs. And if you choose to come with me on Saturday, <laughs> you may um, experience a lot of those challenging beliefs because what we need to do now to raise our consciousness, it would be very, very useful, is to learn to see beneath the surface. 
and to ask ourselves just exactly what is going on in this world. It is important for us now to be discerning. It is most important for us to be examining ourselves because we know it, but to live it and put it into practice, our outer world is nothing more than a reflection of our inner world. Okay, we know that a logical level, right? So how do you really change your outer world or do you just accept it? We'll talk more about that on Saturday. And right now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a bio break and take one myself and see you back here real soon. 10 minutes. Are you still there? Everybody still there? <laughs> uh, I'm assuming you are. Let's see. Put my PowerPoint back up. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Where were we? So expect this cognitive dissonance to show up in your world. Some of your long held beliefs will really be challenged when we're going through this ascension process. As we move to 5D, things are going to be very, very different. And the universe can't do it all at once. You know, it's not like we're going to go to sleep one night and wake up the next morning and there's going to be peace on earth. It's, it's been in process for quite some time, but it is really accelerating now. And some of the beautiful gifts of it. Well, we'll talk about this Saturday too. But they're right around the corner. But uh, we're going to have to do some serious soul searching before we get there. Constantly re examine beliefs, re examine everything you've been told, question everything. Everything you've been told at school, church, any book, dismiss it if it insults your soul. Beliefs can be easily changed, right? So the energies that we're experiencing now, we've just had a full moon and we're at this particular place in the cosmos where we're being constantly bombarded with energy. It, perhaps you can feel it, right? <laughs> I'm sure that many of you can feel it. There's like the swirling energy is around us. And if we visualize this energy as our threefold flame and our Christ energy and see it above us, if we see a belief that no longer serves us, we just gotta go, See ya, put it right in the fire. Our awareness plus the fire of the Christ. We desire to see clearly, set our intention to see through this illusion, to see through this mud and this chaos and this confusion of what's happening now. Because once you see through the illusion, you're definitely part of the solution. Let's talk about the third eye a little bit. The third eye is extremely important. If you see here the picture that shows the pineal, which is the gland that we typically associate with the third eye, and how it corresponds in its placement in the brain to the eye of Horus. 
it's it's rather amazing it really is an eye Okay. <laughs> we want to focus on that pineal gland when we meditate. So it's important for us to look, uh, to think about where it is. To think about our brains. This is the human brain, the cerebral cortex, conscious memories here. The pituitary gland is here and the pineal here. The pituitary gland is also very important. Um, I teach a two-day workshop where we go into the heart meditations and really talk about how to create a new reality. And it's about a new way of being. And we connect the pineal gland to the heart and we also pay attention to the pituitary. And then we look out through our third eye here. And in the workshop, you'll, you'll find that you have beams of light that are around your brain that form the actual aura of the head. And these beams have, over time, we have not used them. So it's useful to activate these beams and that's part of what we do in my longer workshop now how do you know how your pineal is doing <laughs> all right there are some clear signs that your pineal is not functioning right symptoms of pineal gland dysfunction include disrupted sleep cycles or sleep deprivation headaches hypersensitivity to electromagnetic energies we have a lot of electromagnetic energies coming at us these days. And, but we, they can affect us much more if our pineal gland is not functioning properly. It also will give us a skewed perception of reality. Now, if we have a skewed perception of reality, how in the world would we ever know that? <laughs> we could, there'd probably be a lot of people around us telling us that, but from, from a personal perspective, uh, it'd be really hard to distinguish, wouldn't it? So what happens is often the pineal glands are calcified and shriveled up. This happens for several reasons. One is we do not breathe through the prana tube and we ignore our third eye. We have a tube that goes directly down from the center of the head. It's like a fluorescent light bulb, you can think of it. That's our main shishumna prana channel. And we should be breathing through this tube. And this tube goes right through the pineal gland and gives it energy. And also, we talked about this earlier, when we meditate, we want to focus on our third eye. Not just our hearts or our breathing, but also pay attention occasionally to our third eye. Fluoride uh, has been put in our water and it naturally attracts calcium. Increasing fluor fluoridation leads to increased pineal gland calcifications. This is what happens when you drink water with fluoride or get fluoride treatments from your doctor or use fluoride toothpaste. It hardens the pineal gland by forming calcium phosphate crystals around the pineal. Chlorine and bromine also cause the damage. Um, I remember when I uh, first went to the school of these cinema masters, uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, who could, she could see psychically all kinds of things. She would, she would go by and give us a third eye blessing to help get these deposits and open up the third eye. And she would tell us that psychically, it looked like we had barnacles on, on our pineal. And that just did, that doesn't seem good at all. <laughs> so if you think you might have barnacles on your pineal gland, uh, you, you might be right. And, and most of you probably, I'm sure, 
most of you have stopped using it. And you know that spring water is really, really good and there's other, other good waters you can drink, but the damage may still be there. So it takes a while to heal from this once it's, once it's happened. We also want to take it easy on our pineal gland and reduce pineal stress when we can. The pineal to stay balanced, it really needs the appropriate balance of light and dark to operate. It is important to sleep in total darkness and with no electrical equipment around you. So get yourself some of those dark blinds and take your cell phones and everything else out of the bedroom. This improves the production of melatonin and the pineal heavily depends on this. We also need at least 20 minutes exposure to sunlight each day. We don't have to do it when it's 108, <laughs> but it's good to have at least that much exposure. The sun is your friend unless you overdo it. Now something else a lot of people aren't aware of is that we need to reduce our blue light exposure. TVs, cell phones, computer screens use blue light and it interferes with the normal release of melatonin. Especially for those of you who are working at home, taking classes, spending a lot of time in front of the, in front of the computer these days, it's, uh, it's very advisable to get, you can get a pair of glasses that helps block that, that blue layout. You can look it up on the internet, but I highly recommend it. Meditation will help heal the pineal. It will take some time that way. There's, I mean, I can help you with it if you think you might have an issue, but first of all, let me tell you how to check for it. Is your pineal calcified? If you know how to muscle test, and I suspect most of you do, you can muscle test for the presence of calcite. How do you do this? You can do this by using a piece of chalk. And so you, you compare, you ask, ask your body elemental, you take the chalk and put it here and say, well, is it, is it there inside my head? Just ask the question, you know how to do it. Ask yes, no questions when you muscle, muscle test. And uh, if you get a yes, then you, then you have a calcified uh, pineal gland. So then you really need to know what to do about it. All right, intuitive, intuitive or psychic, what's the difference? Well, psychics take their intuitive abilities and cultivate them. Uh, if you learn the techniques carefully, consistently practice and exercise your daily intuition, you develop your intuition and it seems like you're psychic because you will be. Now, when, when I was working with my guru, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, she really didn't like for us to deal with psychic things and I'll tell you why because a lot of people who have these abilities don't necessarily connect with beings of 100% white light. You must be discriminating. And so a lot of psychics can, can give you bad advice or they can, can lead you, they actually can mix white magic and black magic. If any time you need to manipulate someone else or you want to manipulate someone else, that needs black magic because we're not here to manipulate other people. If we want to do a love potion because we want somebody to make somebody love us, that is psychic. That is manipulation. That is not what we're here to do. We're here to exercise our free will and to allow others to exercise their free will. The best psychic and intuitive is someone who always receives the messages from a divine source that is full of goodness and love. So be careful when you're uh, getting your tarot cards read at the um, health and wellness fair. Be discriminating because there, there are good people out there in tarot cards, you know, I love them raw. Uh, it, it was a gift to help us back in ancient Egypt when they came from to help us develop these abilities. You can also visualize energy mandalas, uh, sacred geometric forms. You can use your imagination and create in the heart. 
the more vivid you use your imagination. Uh, I love Richard Bartlett, uh, my matrix energetics teacher. He says, you need to hallucinate out of your skull. And that's what Richard tells us. So the more vivid, the more colorful, the more outlandish when you move, use your information, imagination, the better. Because it really makes a bigger, more significant energy input. It's like when you pull tug upon Superman's cape, you know, you got to tug real hard to get his attention. And the bigger your energy input, the more energy that you put into something, the more likely it is for it to materialize more quickly. Okay. So this is this is just a one one idea and we have, these are templates, geometric healing patterns. We use them a lot these days. Um, this again is from Richard Bartlett. And these geometric healing patterns, there's all kinds of them that have been created for different purposes. So an artist and a healer I get together. And while the healer puts their focus, intent, and love on this particular one is for helping you connect to the angels. So this was created by loving the angels and calling in the angels and then giving us a pattern. So just look at it. First of all, really look at how intricate the design is. We are surrounded by light and information that takes on infinite patterns of sacred geometry. You can also take this healing pattern from the screen, right from the screen, take it and grab hold of it and put it somewhere in your body. Where do you want to put it? Well, let's just go ahead and put it in the third eye for now. Okay. And this will help you attract the angels. It will help you connect to them. It will help you establish a rapport with them. Some of you will feel this energy, I'm sure. We have these imaginations and we could put them to work a lot better. Just like we have angels that are around us and guides to help us. And a lot of times they're really sitting around twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> put them to work. Every time I put a letter in the mailbox or send something or, or, or buy something, anything, I'm like, Angel, check this, make sure that, that this is the best there is and get it to me effectively. And they'll do anything for you. It's not just about um, healing and transforming. It's about getting things done in a smooth, harmonious way so that you can have more time to spend with your loved ones, have more time to create, have the time to do the things you want to do. So especially some of those day to day things that can be frustrating. Ask your, always ask your angels to help you out. Now, when you get into your heart and connect to your third eye, add a control panel somewhere out where you can reach it. And what am I going to do with this control panel? I can do anything I want to. But particularly, I want to do this for my intuition. Okay, so there's a big, there's a big button here that's kind of an on-off switch. Okay, I want my intuition full on when I'm working with a client and and reading the Akash and trying to help see their energy patterns that we might want to shift. Okay, but when I go to Walmart, I'm turning that baby off. <laughs> Or go anywhere where there'll be people with discordant energies. And you, once you really develop these, these abilities, you don't have to see everything all the time. So you can turn up the intensity, turn up the lights, turn up the sound, turn up the volume. You can have uh, one for particular guides or masters that you want to help you. It's, it's your own creation. Just a thought. 
something we can do that we might not ordinarily think of is work in our imaginations with our higher self. So I'm going to put this here. Turn up the volume on that still small voice. Sometimes, you know, it really is a wonderful, quiet, peaceful, little loving small voice that gets drowned out so easily sometimes. <laughs> and, and if the information comes in, it's too much to say, whoa, 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 let's just turn it down. And you can have a button to connect to whoever you want. Send in masters, galactic federation, angels, all the above. Now this is something pretty cool. I want to teach you that you can, uh, well, let's, let's do it right here, but let's decide what we want to do first. Oh, do you hear that siren? <laughs> don't, don't get that everywhere. Absolutely. You can send them, uh, I like to take choker rays and just throw them on amulets and some things. An old Reiki practice. Uh, we're going to create a module, CIA, not to be confused with uh, Central Intelligence Agency. CIA stands for Create, Install, and Activate. All right, so first of all, I'm going to let you do one for yourself. Give your module a purpose. So take a minute, come up with a purpose. Let's see, if I wanted to create something, if I wanted assistance with something, what would it be? Okay, got it? All right, now call upon your angels or ascendant masters or uh, divine beings to work with you, all right? I'm gonna pick um, Michael, Raphael, Mother Mary, Jesus. Is that all it wants to help me play? <laughs> okay, for now. We're, gonna, we're gonna let them do it, okay? I'm gonna take you through the process, but we're gonna trust that they will do this module for us and with us. They're, we're gonna let them lead. All right, so hold out your hand where you want it to be constructed, okay? So I want it to be constructed. Just put your hand out in front of you, flat, flat, palm, palm up. All right, so I want this module to be put right here in my hand. Okay, and you can say a little prayer or just say, beloved Jesus, Mother Mary, Archangel Raphael, Michael. Create a module. sometimes I like long-term kind of things like to help me be aware of uh, my health. Any, anytime I might get out of, out of balance energetically, please really give me a strong signal as to uh, what I can do about that. And so just feel it, feel them working. I mean, sometimes I'll put in crystals or, Uh, herbs or who knows what they'll use. They have all kinds of resources. But when your hand gets heavy, we're going to say this is this is our signal that we're done. So my hand's going to get heavy and heavier to the point where it just drops. And that's how we know. Okay. So that's the creation part. Now we want to install it. All right, we can ask for our guides to tell us where the modules should go. We can ask for our body to tell us where it would like it. Just use your intuition here. Mine wants to go right here, okay. And then place it there. And then feel it kind of sink in. Just use your int intuition now and say, activate.
Okay, I'm going to do another one. I really like creating modules. You might know this. Um, this module will help upgrade your intuitive abilities. It will help clear the pineal gland. It'll add greater sensory perception. And we know also that this module is going to be integrated with grace and ease. Okay, anything else you want to add? <laughs> uh, this time we're going to call upon uh, my, same, my same team, Michael, Raphael, Mother Mary, Jesus. Oh, let's add St. Germain. St. Germain. So feel it, feel them working. Feel your hand getting a little bit heavier, a little heavier, a little heavier. And then feel it drop. So it's, it's individual for each one of you. So now take it and ask your body where it wants to go. Now it's going where you might expect it would, but expect the unexpected. <laughs> Put it in your body, hand it to your body, hand it off to your body elemental. And just activate. And feel it. Take a minute to feel that energy. I want to introduce you to another man that I have fairly recently been studying in depth. And You'll hear a, a lot more about Gregory on Saturday if you come. This particular exercise that we're going to do is for our spiritual clairvoyance. Remember, we said there's two types, mental and spiritual. This is the, for the development of control of clairvoyance through spiritual action. Now, you'll see numbers here, 8888 space, 8888 eight, 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 space, nine. The spaces are important, just like the spaces between words. Each number represents a frequency. And I've talked to you about frequency some before. Frequency, everything is frequency. Every organ, every condition, every disease, every bacteria, every fungus, everything in life has its own specific frequency. Now with Grigory Gravavoy, he's teaching us to do with our minds that which we very often use machines for. We have uh, the Rife machine, which will work with frequency. So it's the same basic principle. Royal Rife, back in the 30s, came up with this amazing microscope. And the difference between his microscope and others was that he could look at things under it that were still alive. They didn't have to have dead cell analysis. So if he took something like a fungus specimen, he would run a series of electrical frequencies to that specimen. And when he hit a resonant point, so he's got these, this specimen here and the frequencies running here, right? And when it hits a resonance, the energy of the whatever he was with, let's say it was a fungus, it multiplies, it resonates 
to the point where it blows it apart. Okay. So you can see where that would be really useful for things like blowing apart cancer cells or blowing apart fungus or blowing apart um, any kinds of things that we don't want in the body, viruses. And I have a rife machine. I've had different varieties over, over the years. Um, I had to buy my first one in a back alley somewhere because they used to be uh, real illegal. They, I guess technically they, well, they're not approved by the FDA, but there's a lot of, Royal Raymond Rife did a lot of research. He checked hundreds and thousands of different things to find their frequency. And so this is the same principle that we're using with Grabavoy, only we're sending these frequencies with our mind. And if you think about how powerful we spiritual beings are, our minds are truly incredible. But when we send this, we don't just want to be in the left brain. We want to be in our hearts, connected through the pineal, which means that the right brain comes into play. And so we play with these numbers. <laughs> we can take them, um, we can take them and write them out. We can take them and color them. We can use our abilities of visualization to put them in a sphere, which is the usual way we start. So, and you can repeat them more and more and more. It's hard to know how many times to do it, but just do it two or three times a day, repeat them on an average, use multiples of three, say 21 times. You can put these numbers at places where you'll see them during the day, where they remind you, you can put them on, we put them in the bathroom cabinet, especially the ones for teeth. Grab a boy has number, he, I have four of his books that are just numbers for different conditions. And he's got, I think, at this point, he's probably got about 200 books that he's written. Uh, but these ones are specifically for certain conditions. And so I, I advise you to write these numbers down. And you can put them on your refrigerator, put them in your car, put them anywhere to remind you. Play with them. Put them in a sphere of light and just go eight, 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 space. A, 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 space, nine. And again, observe. See how that feels. Look for changes in your abilities. We can become our own alchemists by experimenting with these things. And this is one, uh, one thing that you can do without going out and buying an expensive rife machine. <laughs> um, but the rife machine is good too. It's good to have a whole toolbox of different things. We'll talk about Gravel Boy a little bit more on Saturday. And because this isn't the only thing he does. He has many methods of healing. He's quite uh, a philosopher and a spiritual teacher. Speaking of Saturday, um, awakening to planetary ascension. So what we want to do during this time, this amazing time that we're in, is to be fully present, fully awake, fully aware, so we can consciously engage with the intense cosmic energies of the planetary ascension process. This is what we're going through day by day. And I really, it is my heart's desire to ascend. I have, it has been my life goal ever since I started the teachings of the Ascendant Masters, which has been 35 years ago. So you can imagine someone who has prayed and decreed and held this planetary ascension and seen it coming for 35 years. I'm really excited to be here now to see this happening. And 
because of what's going on in the world, our tendency, I think, is because we're feeling somewhat isolated at home, is to not realize how many of the amazing things that are happening on this planet. So what I hope to do with us on Saturday is to, yes, give us some ideas as to what's really going on out there and what we can really do at a deep, deep spiritual level to accelerate through this time. Because this is the time of the ascension. Are we going to ascend? Or are we not going to ascend? This is our opportunity. This is the end of the 21,000 year cycle where we have the opportunity as a planet, as a peoples to ascend together. It doesn't get any better than that. So let's talk about it. Let's engage in it. Let's decide. Let's all go. Let's go together. Let's fasten your seatbelts because this last six months has been pretty crazy. And I suspect the next six months could even get crazier. So let's get together and see what we can do about that for our own selves and for our world. Because like we told us earlier, the best thing we can do for the planet is to work on ourselves. And the most important thing to work on is our consciousness. If I haven't told you tonight, I love you. And we're going to send together, join with me, workshop or no. <laughs> let's get ready for the biggest event ever. And let's be there joyfully ready to usher in a new time of peace and prosperity for all. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. God, and so it is.